Hi, and welcome to Doki Doki Esports. I am your caster, Jits. Joined by me is my fellow caster, Hamcam. Hey, what's up, y'all? Today will be our league intro video and power rankings prediction. Let's start off with Cero Gaming. Alright, so Cero bringing in for the top lane, we got DFG. They have Luffcus in the jungle. Mid lane is going to be Life is Bad. Uh, Spot Soccer 3 is going to be in the AD carry role with DJH pulling up in the rear with support. Next team we have is Vex Gaming. In the top lane we have Doodle. Jungle we have Bitcoin. Mid lane we have Beefy Uggs. ADC we have King D. With support we have Jupiter. After them we've got Shockwave. Top lane is going to be Mach XZ. Jungle Chilled Mario. Just Loaf in the mid lane. SGG Pudgies. Kind of rolling through with AD carry, and then we have a join in the support role. Coming up next, we have Black Jaguar with Lucius Best in the top lane, Bravo Skulls in the jungle role, mid lane Dad Burt, Waller in ADC, and then support we have Wiener Eater. What a great name. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, the next team is going to be um, Team Unnamed Enigma. Uh, top lane is going to be Plat and Schlumpf. Jungle is going to be Holy Moly. Mid lane's Nemesis, BB Easy in the AD carry, and Tank in support. Next we have Backwood. In the top lane we've got four mechanics, Jungle, Souls, Middle, Kyric, ADC, Spectre, and in the support we have Nemesis. Alright, after them we've got Paragon Affinity, Kite Flyer, 92 in the top lane. Jungle is going to be Gimli's Beard. Left Aid pulling up the middle lane, Star Killer Nico and AD Carry, and Omega Furry Masu in support. Last but not least, we have DOV Clovers in the top lane. I hate supports coming into the jungle. Mid lane, we've got Chad is back. ADC, we have Astro Cook. And last but not least, again, we have Amy Sherry coming in at support. All right, that's going to do it up for the uh, rosters. So we're just going to head straight into our power ranking predictions with that. Okay, so the way we're going to do our power rankings here is instead of trying to list them in terms of absolute best, absolute worst, we're going to group them into um, general areas of where we think they're going to place. Uh, so we're going to start with our top four because it's, in our opinion, going to be pretty heavily contested from what we've seen. So I'll, I'll let you tits kind of lead us in with, uh, let's go ahead and start with Cero Gaming. Alright. Um, for Cero Gaming, they average out at a gold 4 MMR for the team. Uh, we've seen some really good play out of DFG uh, on York. Yes. I really think that's someone that should be looked at uh, when thinking about bans for Cero. He does well on it. We have seen the team choke a little bit knowing how to play around it, but if they do get that down, that's going to be a huge pickup for them. That's almost going to be, need to be banned every single game. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things where, I mean, 72% win rate across 57 games played, like, it's actually unreal. Um, and so, I mean, if, if the team gets it, you have a pretty good guess that they're going to be really good on it. Um, but as, as Tiz was saying, we did see in a scrim where... Um, they kind of misplayed their win condition. But it, it's definitely a, a big kind of up for them where, I mean, having a champion that you pretty much have to ban against the team is always going to help you a lot. Um, I think one thing is that uh, we haven't seen much of DGH, but he seemed to do pretty well in his game that we did see him playing at support. He seemed to mesh pretty decent with support soccer after losing their previous support. Yeah. Huge carry for them, so we weren't exactly sure how they were going to do, but it really seems that they found, filled that gap quite well. Mm -hmm. um, Life is bad, has been playing great. Uh, Lufkus does pretty good in the jungle, and really the whole team seems to do fairly well together and know how to play with one another. And just in solo lanes by themselves, they do fairly well too. Yeah, they're all pretty good players. Um... A lot of what we saw from them was before they got either DJH or DFG. Um, so some of this is kind of speculation going in because um, we haven't gotten to see either of those players too much. Uh, so we, d we don't know how many win conditions outside of York they actually have. Um, with their old top laner they had, they were able to play quite a variation of styles and still do well. Um, and then that was kind of 
flip flopped where their support was uh, their old support Slim Shady was kind of like a, a brand one trick pony. Um, so now we see a top lane one trick pony and kind of a, a all around support. Plays a lot of Scion. Um, I'm sure Tits would have put them in top four just because of the Scion pick. Oh yeah, <laughs> Scion support's an amazing pick. It does so much for a team truly, and I'm I'm really happy that he does play yeah. it. Not a pick that's played too much, and if you can draw a Scion support man, that's really big. Yeah, he plays a lot of like tank, engage heavy supports. He's even pulling out Galio support, which I mean hasn't really seen play in several months in the support role. That's um, they overall do seem. I don't know if they're just playing the champions because they are meta, or if they genuinely like these champions because they are meta. Mm -hmm. uh, so if they can play champions that are relatively meta, obviously, except for the York that obviously. Isn't meta and like pro play and right. higher and more stuff for various reasons. Yeah. And and like, then looking at soccer, um, his main champion is Fane. Um, and he's he's not like your typical I'm gonna like sit here and troll and farm and like slowly win this team fight. He's like probably the most aggressive Vayne I've ever seen. Uh, he's whether that's good or bad. Aggressive. Um <laughs> Um Yeah, it, it, Coast is We've seen him on both Zack and Sedge, and he does very well on both of them. Yeah. I think Zack, I think Zack's a little bit better, but that might just be kind of the nature of Zack at the moment. Uh, I think they're both very good junglers. Uh, he does play a decent amount of Skarner, haven't I don't think I've actually seen him scrim with it yet, but we know it's on his champion list. Yes. I also think Skarner's huge. Yeah, Skarner is still, he's a nutty character. He's so good. Uh, he just provides so much CC. Yeah. Yeah, and then life is bad in the mid lane. Um, I mean, it's. I, there's not really a whole lot to say about this guy. Like, he's really good. He's, he's like, he's really good. But he's also one of those guys that, like. He's fit, He's just solid, right? He, he's not super crazy on any one character. He doesn't. I haven't really seen too many major flaws. He does have some very suspect decision making. I, I think he had some questionable Azir plays that I've seen where he just kind of <laughs> shurim a shuffle one man in and got instantly killed so um, kind of kind of what I, I feel he's going to be the consistent rock for the team since you've got this, yeah. this potential one trick pony in the top lane you've got this ridiculously aggressive vain main um, in the AD carry and so we're I'm kind of looking at life is bad to just hold the reins you know go go even be the the consistent damage for this team. Yeah, we, I think we only really saw him pop off one game. That was on the Corky, if I do remember right. I correct? think so, yeah. And it was, it was one of those um, like those like slow pop offs where you don't realize it, and then he's like yeah. he's nine and zero. Oh. You're like, oh. <laughs> it was, it was really nice the way he did it right. because he was using his gold very well. Mm -hmm. He wasn't getting caught out. He wasn't doing anything crazy. He was doing very, very solid, consistent damage with fights and up kills and then all of a sudden you look at him like you said he had like nine nine or eleven kills yeah. and he just started steamrolling fights it was absolutely awesome to watch um so i'm excited i'm really excited to watch this team i think they're gonna be a lot of fun yeah they, they're definitely good they really know what they're doing all right um that's uh, that's pretty much all i have for zero at the moment yeah i've seen a lot of scrims from them so far good so i'm excited for it good team to watch yeah, definitely. I think it'll it'll be really interesting seeing how they do. Another really good team to bring up into the uh, first four slots here is going to be Shockwave. Yeah, uh, for sure. They only got to see them scrim once. I, I think I caught like 10 minutes of another one when I was casting with Zeratai, but uh, they definitely they know what they're doing for sure. Oh yeah, they, they seem to have pretty good overall uh, team and they just, I don't know, as a, as a team, they seem very well-rounded. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really look at them and go, this is, like, they've got just such a hard carry in this lane, right? Or, like, yeah. this is an amazing guy. Um, I mean, they've got a really solid bot lane. Adjourn and Pudgy played really well together. Um, mm -hmm. They're... I mean, I guess if I was to try and single out one person, I was fairly impressed by the uh, the play from their jungler compared to the other junglers that I've seen so far in the league. I think uh, jungler 
played pretty well. Mm -hmm. I mean, from the games we saw, I couldn't I couldn't see a lane that seemed weak more so than other lanes. Right. Like, I don't know. And I said that the jungler played really well, and I, and I agree. But I, I don't think that his jungling was so far ahead of the rest of his team that it made him, like, Star. Right. You know, I, I just think that all of them pretty even, um, skill wise, roughly, yeah. and they just I don't know, they seem like they mesh well together, which is really nice to see. Yeah, they, they... It makes the end phase a lot harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they definitely have a decent macro plan. I mean, they were they were doing really well in games, um, and and they have pretty good champion pools. Uh, like I said, the the jungler. He seems to main Zach and Lee Sin. Lee Sin's going to be hurting a lot this patch with the uh, the tracker's knife yeah. removal. But like we were saying with Saro, uh, Zach probably probably going to be the most hotly contested jungler in our league for a bit. Um, it's, it's just a very solid character. Oh yeah, yeah. Zach's huge. Um, as you said before, his gang patterns are very nice. Everything about Zach right now, he's loving this. Like Zach. Zach as a champion right now loves this yep. uh, state of the game. You can see players playing him, which is really nice. Yep. Um, I'd like, I, I would like him though, to start playing some more games on some different junglers, being that Lee Sin couldn't get hit so yeah. hard. Um, it's a pretty big indirect nerf to uh, Lee Sin. Whereas, you know, Jarvan's still Jarvan. Granted, a little while ago, he did lose that four armor. Yeah, four armor, which has pretty much completely removed him from the upper competitive scene. Yeah. Uh, we still see him a little bit in in our league, but he's definitely not the the guy he used to be. No, I just I think I think the reason that he's not nearly as contested, nearly I think nearly as much yeah. up there is because junglers more so know how to punish you being low, with no one to invade, no one to get wards, and not attract you a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, generally speaking, anything below, like, mid to high diamond, teams aren't going to know how to do that quite as well. Right, and be able to punish that low health person in the chat. Yeah. I think uh, Sejuani would be another huge thing, and Skarner. Uh, he's got a little bit of Skarner. Yeah, he does some Skarner, he does some Jags, so, I mean, he's got a decent, a little bit of play on some decent characters. So, so we'll see how he ends up doing. Uh, Mach in the top lane. I think he plays a lot of Riven and a lot of Scion as well. Um, so just looking at those two picks, you can go, okay, he can play a tank and he can play a carry, um, which yeah. is good. I don't know how many of each role he can play, but he can at least, he at least is able to vary himself. He's an, uh, it's, it's enough to know where that he's not just going to be thrown on a tank every single game or a carry every single right. game. So it can make it a little bit harder to game plan for it. Mm -hmm. Whereas if, if you know this guy only plays carries in the top lane, alright, fine. Play someone that you know can counter carries. Like if he plays Camille Grandma, you just play Poppy and you tell and you just laugh at the guy. Right. What are you going to do? There's nothing that you can do in that space. You have the jungler up there and you get three kill lead. <laughs> and the lane's over. Yes. Whereas, you know, if you got a little bit of a distinction between you got your carries and your tank, it's a little bit harder to game plan for that, unless you try to force him onto something, but it seems like he'll be okay on picking later or. Yeah, he, could, he can definitely do either, so that'll that'll help him out a lot up there. Um, we don't know a whole lot about Just Loaf, he only recently joined the team, uh, and his champion list on OP.GG isn't very telling, so I Pretty much nothing to say on him, sadly. So, I, I mean, yes. That being said, what I have to say is hopefully he can uh, step up big and at least be a consistent player for this team. Yeah. This team doesn't seem like that they really need a giant carry coming out of the mid. No. Um, and their, every other role in this lane can definitely uh, proceed to help carry. Yep. It's fine. Yeah, and I, I think they're... Bot lane is probably going to be the the biggest carry for them. 
Again, not not that their bot lane is steps ahead of the rest of the team, but um, when you're all kind of even in skill, the bot lane is probably going to end up being the one that does the most heavy lifting. Uh, and it, it seems like this meta is pretty big around bot lane. It's, you know, it's not how it was with the Bounty Team or the Dem or the uh, Arden Sims, I'm sorry. Right. Big. Whoever won those lanes, bot lane, won the game both in that meta. Now it, it helps a bunch. Like a lot more, and I think more than other lanes winning. But you can still get through it just fine. Yeah. He plays a good amount of Lucian. Budgie does Lucian and Zaya. Um, Zaya is a character that I'm seeing on a lot of these AD carries lists, but I haven't seen him actually pull out that consistently. And I think that's probably one of the more top tier AD carries in the current meta. Um, so hopefully a lot of teams start working that in. I think Budgie could definitely kind of try that a little bit more. He's playing some Quinn in solo queue, which I don't think is going to get anything done for him in the long run. Really hoping that we're not seeing an ADC coming out. Yeah, but not ideal. Hey, what do you know? Yeah. yeah and then, I don't know, onto a churn, just again. The uh, champion list is a little little off. It looks like he just plays Phil a lot. But uh, saw him on some tanks, plays a lot of Lulu. So, I kind of, again, filling in whatever the team needs, which I think is kind of just the moral of the story for this team so far is. What does the team need, and that's what this team does. Yeah. By far, it's kind of a not a fail team, but a team that's able to adapt well to what they need and know how to play multiple things and pretty much do as it, as is needed. Right. For them. Yeah, that's that's what I'm expecting from them at least is adaptability, not any kind of like super hardcore domination on a certain style. Just solid, consistent play in whatever style they need. Alright, so next up, let's talk about a Unnamed. Now, you haven't seen them play yet, but I did get to cast it with one of our other casters, Zeratai. Um, they're pretty good, I think. Based, based off just their ranks, they are the highest average ranked team in the league, uh, sitting at a gold 3 uh, average. Um, so I mean, they're they're all definitely very skilled players. Um, looking at their like standard character list, though, uh, they they might be one of the easier ones to work around in the draft if you can figure it out. Seems like they got a you know three or four kind of I won't say one tricks, but one tricks. You know, you got forty four games on Lux X highest seven. Yeah. And you got 72 games on Trist, 31 on Jinx, 33 on Rakan, and X4 is at 10. Uh, that doesn't have too many games on Darius in rank, but a lot of, a lot of if not say all of his normals have either been on Darius or Vladimir. Right. If you ban one of those away, I mean, really, yeah, you got four options there to just ban a champion hits them significantly. Yeah. Um, and even beyond that, like a lot of these players don't have very much variance in their style choices with their characters. Um, again, like yeah. Platin, two most played is Darius and Nasus, Holy Moly, Warwick, Lee Sin, and Kane and Jarvan. Like those are all like super AD heavy kind of kind of you know, mixed engage. Um, J4 is a little bit more heavier, but he's also seen a hit, so I don't know how much we'll see him play that, but um, you know, and then Nemesis, pretty much mid lane, just the Lux and Zed, so he's actually kind of the most diverse of them. Um, but, you know, I, I don't expect to see this team playing like a, a super peel heavy comp one game and then playing a dive heavy comp the next. It seemed fairly one dimensional, which uh, it could hurt them. Right. Uh, if, they, if they do. Out, I mean, to get wins with it, and they can do it across a broad section of champions, it'll be fine. Yep. But I think that's one of the big things is that they really need to start expanding their champ list. Um, not, they don't really need to change the style, just because dive heavy comps are the easiest to run. Yeah. 
if you're a new team or you're on this ELO just because of the, the nature of it. You know what this team like right. everyone knows how teams Yeah, play. and it's, it's it's the easiest win condition. It's just death ball win. Yeah. You know, um, as opposed to trying to learn the split or poke with the siege, stuff like that. Uh, control is a lot harder to get uh, down as a team. It takes a lot more time. Yeah. I think it's, if you can get them down though, it's a really good way to play into a team that only can run dive. Right. But, uh, so. yeah, and I mean, I don't, I don't know like how much dive this team is going to be playing, but um, I mean, looking at, uh, assuming their ideal team comp is uh, Darius, let's say Kane, Lux, Tristana, and Rakan, um, you've got a decent amount of dive, but that's, to me, that looks mostly like a uh, kind of a dominate the, the side lane um, kind of team comp. Which, granted, like I said, this is the the highest average team, so theoretically, the the most skilled players, um, and it looks like the way they're wanting to play, is going to just be to overwhelm and win. Yeah. So. Which, if you get set behind, can be really rough. Obviously. Yeah. And there goes your team comp. Yeah. So, I mean, it's really good. Really good players, just looking at their stats and from the, the game I watched, they're definitely solid. Um, and I wouldn't, I would be surprised if most of their games they just steamrolled in lane and won the game because um, it's, it's definitely possible for them. Uh, but I, I think if a, if a team can get a good draft or um, even just go even or play neutral correctly, they, they could they could definitely put a challenge up for these people. Oh, for sure. I think, uh, well, I, I, it's hard to pick, like, one player that's, from looking at stats and from what uh, Hencam and Zeratai have told me about the game, it, it seems kind of hard to pick someone that, like, is just way ab above. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, same as before, but I think being that Eevees plays so many hyper carries, I mean, he plays Triss, Jinx, Twitch. Top three right there. That's a lot of hyper carries. Yep. Uh, I think that's a lane that you're definitely going to be looking at getting ahead. Try to just like carry the game. Right. Which is definitely not a bad strat if you're playing hyper carries. <laughs> and if tank can try to keep him safe, which Rakan can do, Alistar can do. Yeah. Karma's not, you know, which she can, don't get me wrong, but I think a real good spot. Right yeah. Now. Yeah, and I mean, he plays but some I Alistar, think... he plays some, uh, some Taric. He's definitely yeah, I, on top of the tank meta. Yeah, I think that that lane sets each other up nicely. Yep. Uh, the, the, I guess the big thing that kind of, not hurts me, but I could see as a problem for the team is possibly the mid lane. And actually being a Lux one trick. Yeah. Mains Lux, and, though he does have some games on Orianna. Um, I'm trying to remember if he played Orianna in, in the scrim. I think he did, and I think it was really good. Yeah. I'm gonna... Or he's an amazing team player. Right. He does everything you want for a team. He has CC, shields, um, zoning control, and just everything you could ever want in a team champion is Orianna. Yeah. Um, and so if he's well practiced on that, I think that'll be great for them. Keep, uh, keep practicing on that. I'm not a huge fan of Zed and Yasuo in this team. And Yasuo a little bit more so than Zed. Right now there's a lot there's a lot of healing and uh, real uh, possible for ADCs. So Zed could have a very difficult time popping someone. Yep. And with all the CC that's around right now in the sports and the top and even the junglers, you know, everyone seems like they have CC right now. That doesn't like CC that much because you pick Zed and you play Tom Hinge. Kills you Zed. Uh, so I, I think that's something that if he can get, if he can do really well on Ori, Lux, and like another mid laner that's kind of more team oriented, I think this team's going to do very, very well. Yeah. Yeah, I would. If, if I didn't think their the ability to draft around them so heavily, um, was there, I would probably try and put them in a, 
my number one, um, just just based off the pure player skill that I've seen coming from them. Um, and they and they had some really good adaptability when they were scrimming against Vex. They, I would say, got thoroughly beaten by Vex game one, um, but then they you know they adapted and ban, and they they came they came around and it was really impressive. So um, I mean I know they know how to adapt and draft in terms of bans, but we'll have to see if they can do it in pick other. Um, so that's that's a huge thing, and that's a reason, like you said, being able to adapt to pick man phase. Mm-hmm. Go into it just thinking that you're gonna only ban this every single time. You have hands or butts. You're, you very well could get stomped in a best of three. Yep. Just because you don't know how to adapt. Um, them showing that they do understand that is really big for the team. Yeah. Big ban obviously doesn't win a game. It just you gotta play the game either way. But it, it definitely helps if you have a if you win big ban. It helps other teams win big ban. Yeah, for sure. So I, I think. Like you were saying, I expect the bot lane to kind of be the, the rock consistent if either of the solo lanes get um, kind of kicked out because of their champion pools. But I, I don't know how much... I, I don't think the mid lane's champion pool is going to be that bad because he's got the Ori, he's got the Lux, um, he's got options. I think mostly, again, we're looking at this top laner it might be easy to ban out and see how um, you know, viable he is once he's off his comfort picks. Rounding off, rounding up the last mid here of uh, top four we got is uh, Jax Kleptomancy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's all we got to yeah. say. Kleptomancy Jax. Oh. That's <laughs> top four. Um, uh. Uh, POV coming in here. Uh, very good, obviously. You know, Sam played the Jax Klepto. He knows that we're messing with him, but it was different. It threw us off. Believer and I'm a believer of it now. I've seen him do well on it. Yeah. So. I oh, I mean, we've seen him do well on and do bad. So I mean, it's it's got its time and place. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, I, it's, you know, it's, that's not his only champ. Obviously, he's played Plank Plank, which received a pretty big hit mm-hmm. with that mana nerf. Uh, we saw it in the game on stream here, and that you know mana like three minutes in, I yeah. think he ended up back in TP. So I think Gang Plank. Unless you know how to manage his mana perfectly, I think he's pretty strong. Yeah, it's it's not like a not a free pick anymore. Um, using using your yeah. Q level one pretty much is just never worth it now. Um, late game has got the same mana cost, so again his, his scaling is pretty much the same. But uh, the barrel nerf and the Q nerf definitely hit the champion. So yeah, early game nerf where his weak point was before even. Now is going to be huge. Yep. For him. Uh, I think uh, Chloe's champ got hit decently there. And he still got the Jax and the Scion and the Yeah. They're all, they're all fine. All solid um, characters. Yeah, for sure. Now, let's move on to the big picture here. And that's that's Astro Cup. Ooh, yeah. I don't I don't know about the big it's, picture. I think there's two big pictures on this team. And Astro Cup is definitely one of them. His Zaya gameplay was beautiful. Yeah. He hit some huge, huge, huge blade callers in uh, a couple of the games we've watched. Yep. He gets very clean on the champion. Knows, seems to know that champions in and out, in and out very well. Uh, and she's a champion that can solo carry a game. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely solid and, on her. Um, he's got on Zaya. You've seen him play Tristana. He's got on Tristana. I think we've seen him play Paris. Like he's he's just an all around solid AD carry, um, yeah. kind of the one I've been the, the most impressed with. Uh, yeah, coming out of the ADC role, I would I would agree that so far he uh, he has been top of yeah. uh, the ADCs. We've been able to see. Yeah, and I mean, not only is he a really good AD carry, but I mean, Inu Bashiri is also just an excellent support. Um, his Tom Kench gameplay, crisp. Um, he plays Rakan, which goes well with Zaya. Definitely one of the better Tom Kench gameplays I've yeah. seen. Uh, coming out, uh, beautiful powers. Uh, his peel and knowing when to use the tongue lash even in lane, he has some extra poke down. It was really nice. That is ADC of a lot of very situations. And just didn't see him use his ult that 
block. Yeah. What I remember that was super effective. So something that he can definitely improve on there is uh, knowing when to use that top damage ult to get around the map a lot quicker. Because it, it's a very big uh, ability to use either to start a fight, rotate to a dragon, use that you and the jungler started early. Just get around the map. It's really, really nice. Yeah. It's a pretty big tool. So I'd like to see that more. Because Rakan was very nice. Mm -hmm. Saw a lot of really good engages. Yeah, just kind of all around yeah. solid player. From what I remember, he missed a couple of Leo ults, but the ones he hit were like three or four Leo. Like monster Leo ults. Right. Ult. Not the most impressive Leo, but like not terribly bad. Like he still had really good plays on it. So I mean again, one of those things are I mean you refine that play and you're easily um, easily a top level player. Had uh, had that if I remember that Velkaz game. Yes. Where he got on the, the ridiculous Velkaz. Yeah, he. I think they lost that game just because he got caught out of position a couple times. Correct. I'm pretty sure they won the that. Velkaz. I'm pretty sure they won the Velkaz game. I remember him getting kicked out on the Velkaz. Um, I can't. I think it was against Sarah. I, I, it was. Probably. I'm pretty sure it was Sarah, but I also specifically remember. Um, the enemy team saying we couldn't deal with the Velkaz. Yeah, no, his his Velkaz was huge. Yeah. He came up huge in that game. Uh, so definitely something to look at. He's got by far the most games played on Velkaz. Yeah. Well, so if if he can keep up that level of play on that champion, he's gonna do very good for them. Yeah, he's he's the other person that I was kind of pointing at as a possible big picture for this team. Um, very consistent, really strong if he gets his yeah. picks. Um, almost life is bad-esque, where you don't really realize he's slaughtering you until he's 9-0. and um, So he's definitely a good player. Really like the, the, the work he's doing. So, I mean, yeah. between him and Astro, you've got two pretty major carries. Um, and I think the, the biggest downfall for this team has always been their lack of early game focus and efficient jungling. Uh, and they do have a new jungler who I have not seen play yet. So I don't know how that's going to do for them. Um, I think in the long run it could benefit them. A yeah. Bit. Not, not to say the other guy was bad by any means. I'm not trying to bad mouth him in any shape or form. Right. But uh, he is looking, he plays a lot. Got three decent uh, win rates on his jungle champs, yep. which is really nice to see, and fairly decent KDAs as well. He's really looking at uh, Kane, or yeah, Kane and Shivana. I mean, he's got a 4.3 KDA on Shiv and a 76 percent win rate or 70. Yeah, KDA. that's really nice. And then Kane's at a 3.5 with a uh, 64 percent over 25 percent. Those two picks are really big. Yeah. And I don't think either of them right now are in a, in a terrible spot. They're not in a terrible spot, but they aren't quite meta driving, which is where no, I I'm either. again looking kind of at this jungle, going what what does this do for the team? Um, like we said, Chad and Astro, huge carries, some of some of the bigger carries in the entire league. So I'm seeing a, a kind of what looks to be a farm heavy jungler. Um, I'm still not sure how this is going to mesh into their playstyle and what I think the team needs to do to be at the tip of the top. Yeah. When you have two real big carries like that, you don't really need a carry coming out of the jungle. Yep. Uh, per se, obviously it's nice to have if he gets big, he gets big, right. and sweet. But I think it'd be a lot better if you had a tank, heal, or a gauge, something of that sort coming out of the jungle to really complement the carry roles from Astro and Jen. Right. Yeah, or if you are playing a kind of a more carry jungler, at least one that has some pretty good gank assist so that you can get your lanes rolling still. Um, so I th that's what I really want to start seeing out of uh, I Hate Supports here is either some tanks or some really decent gank assist champions um, just to kind of cover up the, the slight weaknesses that his team does have. Mm -hmm. I think overall this team, uh, assuming that support meshes with the team, it's yeah. fine. Seem to all play into each other very well, right? And know each other's strengths and weaknesses, and know how to kind of play with that, and really use use their players effectively. 
Yeah. Definitely, uh, definitely is something that they are good at is kind of just meshing. You know, they've got good carries. I think, I think they've got a definite chance of being, I mean, at, at least top three. Um, yeah. So really looking forward to seeing like, DOV. Like we said, it's it hard for us to, like, this team's number one. Like, no offense, right. but this team's two, three, and one. Very hard just because there's, there's a lot of teams here that are, I don't want to say similar, but they all have the potential right. to do very, very well. So I think it was a lot easier. Yeah, it's, it's easier to call them for sure. Because, I mean, every team here has, has a highlight, has a, has a really good player or a really good win condition. Um, but then they also have just like one thing, one or two things. But it's just like, maybe this is what's going to hold them back. And we'll have to see what the other teams can adapt and do to stop them from doing their win condition. So, again, I mean, top four, probably. Uh, we could be surprised, but I, I really expect this to be the case. I think I think Vex, um, if the other people that we already listed are the definitive top four, I think Vex is the definitive fifth, personally. Um, I have seen Vex compete at an even level with all of these teams, um, but they have like one big downfall, and it's that they are very good at one thing. They they are the death comp team. They they steamroll and they slaughter you, but the second you ban away Galio. And J4 and Amumu, um, this team definitely does struggle. Um, I think that's something that they definitely need to work on. When you're so one-dimensional that it that you almost can't play, you, you can still play, obviously. Like they, they do relatively okay, right. but when you're gonna have a lot of trouble touching the top four, when you can't get that dive heavy comp, it is huge. You have you have to either have multiple 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 champions that do that dive, or have a relative idea on how to play any sort of other comp. Right. Uh, when when you are that one dimensionally, you're gonna get banned real quick. When people start noticing it. Again, for this video being that we're highlighting it, right? They should they notice should. it. Um, and I mean, and looking at that. Unlike the other team, where the players look like they only played one type, Vex looked like they could play a lot of types. Um, oh yeah, I mean Bitcoin plays J4, Sedge, Amumu, and Zach. Um, good tanks, some with Engage, some with Peel. They've got options there. Uh, Doodle plays Gangplank, Darius, Alawi, Nasus. So I mean, this guy looks like he can turtle. I think Alawi is a fantastic underused character. Um, she's really good at like anti dive or uh, poke siege comps, those kind of things. Oh yeah, um, jumping into an Alawi is right. Rough. Like you can't engage on into Alawi very well. Um, and then I mean King D, also a very good AD carry. Um, similar champion pool to everyone else. He plays the Zai. He's got the Varus and Tristana, and he's proficient on all of them. I mean he he does all of them very well. And I mean you've got the hyper carry, you've got two carries that can peel really well, and one um, some that can engage. Uh, and then Jupiter uh, looks like he mostly plays kind of engage heavy with Leona and Rakan. But I mean if you if you're already playing a tank support, it's not that hard to pick up a Brahm and a and a Tom Kench and say okay I'm going to right. I'm going to support my team rather than um, lead them. So I mean I. Beef Yugs definitely has a wide champion pool too. Right. Um, Galio and Vagar do completely different things. <laughs> yeah, one's a, one's a turtler and one's an enabler. Yeah, exactly. And then throwing Zoe and yeah. in there is cool. And, and Echo. You gotta, you gotta, he's got. Yeah, you got a mixture of every. He's got two assassin characters. He's got a, a team focused uh, roamer. Um, he's got the, the turtle mage. I mean, he's he can pretty much do whatever his team needs him to with these characters. I mean, maybe maybe like an Azir or Corky would be good in here for like some super consistent damage, but I mean, these these guys can play these characters. Um, you just have to see them be able to pull out the different team comps than the Death Ball to really break into that top four echelon that I think they're definitely capable of. Once, once 
once they figure out how to play different comps, as the season progresses, as they start adapting as a team and learning different things, this team definitely could breach top four. Um, but like you said, that's the biggest thing. They need to learn yep. in order to, to think about breaching it. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I think this team, they get their comp. It's really, right. really, really enjoyable to watch. Right. So I mean, fun. they they got their comp, and they steamrolled unnamed. And it's not like they they just uh, you know got to the point where they just won. They were steamrolling in lane. And as I was saying, unnamed potentially has the best players in the league. And they were slaughtering those players in lane when they got their comp. Like, Vex is a very talented team. They just need to broaden their horizon in terms of team play. Sure, I think uh, I think if they can get that figured out, they'll, they'll be in a great position in this league yeah. uh, to do well. For sure. Yeah, I, I mean, there's there's that's the biggest negative. I mean, really, I, I can't think of too many others that I was looking to work on. And I think that's by far the biggest positive too is that they know what they're right. good at. They know what they're good at. Uh, one big thing this team has going for them is these guys are all like great friends, as far as uh, we've heard. Um, yeah. These guys know each other. They're pretty much the only team that has entered the league and has not changed their roster since they initially signed up. It's, it's these five and these five only, so. I think that, that helps a lot, because you know you start, you know the players. Right. And you're friends with your team, and you see them as more than just a team, and as, and as an actual person, yep. it promotes growth, because you can talk amongst the team, and be like, hey, you're doing this poorly? Right. Like, let's bring this up and focus on yeah, it. Yeah, and nobody's going to get butthurt, right? You exactly. say that to someone you met last week, they're going to be like, no, I think you're wrong, right? Um, yeah, they're going to be all defensive. <laughs> yeah. So, I think this this team, because of that, this team also has some of the best potential to actually grow if, if they can start focusing on the right things. Okay, so we're going to kind of clump the, the last three teams together as a kind of like we did with the first group of four. Uh, we haven't really seen a whole lot out of Paragon Affinity, uh, Backwood, or Black Jaguar. Of the three, we've only actually seen Paragon play once, and the other two not at all. So it makes it a little bit harder to place them definitively, definitively on this list. Um, but we're still going to give them an objective look over just based off of their OP.GGs. Um, and the fact that we haven't seen them play isn't the only reason why we're putting them down here, most of it is the the objective research that we've done into the players. Uh, so I guess I guess starting with Paragon, uh, they've got uh, they've got a pretty decent AD carry. Uh, he plays a good amount of Caitlyn and Zaya. Uh, again, Zaya coming up big. I think Zaya could become kind of the Zach of the AD carry uh, for our league where. If the players really dig into her, she could become the most hotly contested AD carry. That's what I'm seeing. So it's good to have that under his repertoire. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Caitlyn's not, not a bad ADC. You know, we have ragged on her in streams just because she's hard to play around in a team yeah. setting. If they as a team can learn how to play around that champion, that's, that's great because she's got a good win rate on it. He plays a quite, and he plays quite a bit. That could be really big yeah. for them. Um, their mid laner plays Malzahar quite a bit, and that's a very good pick. Uh, right now, I love Malzahar. Yep. Right now, he also plays Ziggs and Morgana. Morgana a little less, still favorable, but I think Ziggs is okay. Uh, he still supplies just fine deeps, and uh, he can really burst someone down. Whether if he gets any sort of a head, uh, he can one, essentially one shot an ADC. Just for one combo in ADC, you can eliminate an ADC with a Ziggs in a fight. That's huge. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ziggs is really good for taking on carries. He's also really good for taking on structures, which is something I kind of look to this team for doing with their comps. Is take If you're going with the Caitlyn, you're going to want that Ziggs to really enhance your turret taking ability. Because, um, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's what. That's what Caitlyn does best, is she gets really good lane dominance, and then she takes your tower and steamrolls. Uh, if you do that with a uh, Ziggs on top, you're going to make that steamroll happen even faster. Um, 
So that's that's a potential combo that this team could be looking for. And, uh, general, just kind of early game dominance is what I think this team's going to want to go for. I think uh, I think that'll be big and um, play Sedge and Jungle. You know, we'll complement those just mm -hmm. fine. Uh, Sedge Mai provides good deal for that in case they're playing into a mage yep. comp. You know, and buff an ADC yeah. and now gives the TP. So that's just fine. I uh, don't know too much about the top lane. Uh, he does play Nar and Renekton, Shen, which I think are all fine picks right now. I really look. Like Look more towards the Nar and Chen than the Renekton, but that's just because they supplement more uh, team play as opposed to the social Yeah, support. that's true. That being said, if we're looking at this team as a potential early game team, uh, the Renekton does kind of complement that as well, yes. where he gets good lane dominance, you know, makes it hard for his opponent to do anything. Um, and, and the Nar and Chen both do that pretty fantastically as well. Nar's pretty lane mm -hmm. dominant. Chen, if your teammate's getting dove in the bot lane, you Chen ult to him, right? So. Uh, I think this team has the real potential to really complement each other uh, with their picks. I'm, I'm excited for it. Uh, it'd be really nice if we could see a real different style of yep. play coming out from a team. And, and this team, what they like to play at least, from what we can go off of here, is yep. that team. Just way off, way off the path that other teams are right. Other teams might not know how to play around this very well. Yeah. Yeah, and while they have this really good potential here, the I think the biggest reason why uh, I would put them so low on the power ranking is the difficulty to actually pull this off. They've got a potentially strong um, team comp here um, and strategy, but it's it's not an easy one, um, and I, I think having to rely on that is going to be difficult for this team. But I mean, I'm I'm excited to see if they can do it. Um, see what else they can pull out of their pockets. Because I mean, by by no means are they are they awful players. So yeah, I mean, looking forward to seeing what uh, Paragon can pull up here. Next in the group here that we've got is Backwood. I haven't really been able to see literally anything from them. No game, no nothing. Uh, I was told that they did have a scrim today that went fairly well for him, but you know, we don't have much to go off of other than their OP.GG's. Um, based off of that, OP.GG's, um, Spectre is playing pretty much all meta stuff right now, which is good to see. He's playing Ferris and Zaya, uh, some Kaelin in there, and some Jinx Run in there as well. And uh, Support playing Big stuff like Blitzcrank and Alistar, which are both good. And then in the top lane, you yeah, got seems to be more of a carry top lane. Yeah, kind of the first like what I would say is more like a hard carry rotated top lane. Something we haven't seen too much yeah. of yet. There's a lot of Riven, right. there's a lot of Clad, Camille, so Yeah, um well it's kinda of, well, kind of all over the board is uh, jungle pool, so kind of hard to say what he's going to be doing here and what he wants to do. He's got some carry, he's got some tank, he's got gauge, he's got deal. He got a little bit, literally a bit of everything. Can't really comment too much on what we think is going to be his strong suit. But, yeah, uh, I think I think something that's going to be good for them is going to be kind of like a, a pick comp with a split pusher on the side. Right. So they can play all the top lane. Yeah, I mean you you gotta. And, like a Riven or a Kled up in the top lane who's going to be pretty good in lane, um, have a lot of side lane dominance. You've got a, somebody who plays primarily early game junglers to kind of assist in that, right? Um, so I think those two will be doing really well together. I think you'll, you'll see souls a lot in the top lane with four mechanics up there. Yeah. Um, and then like, like Tits was saying, you know, you've got players who play a decent amount of kind of pick styles, so... Uh, you know, Varus is really good at picking people out, so is Blitzkrieg and Alistar. I think uh, I think if they can get a Blitz here, uh, going fairly consistently, or even the Alistar, like you said, I think that's going to be really nice for right. them. Uh, supplement that pick comp. It helps quite a bit in lane. I mean, Blitz and lane 
very, very yep. good. Uh, but pro the only problem with Blitz right now is that a lot of supports are playing that tank gear support. So you really don't want to pull in an Alistar, a Braum, or a Tom Kench into your ADC. I think it's real scary. Uh, yeah, it does, it does definitely get scary. Uh. So if you can pull the ADC, though, that, that'll be pretty big because Blitz can do very good early game damage and could be taking you tonight. That's just an extra bit of damage you can really take. And if Spectre's playing something like Jinx, or Caitlyn, or if there's someone that can supplement extra CC onto them, and they're locked up there for, you know, 3, 4, 5 seconds, I guess 5 seconds is pretty long, but, you know, 3 to 4 seconds, uh, you can definitely chunk out an ADC real quick, force them not to farm, or back, or get a kill even. Yeah, um, it's definitely a, that'll be really it can cool. definitely do a lot, and... I mean, as we've been seeing with the general updates, it looks like in a probably in a couple patches time, I wouldn't be surprised if kind of squishier supports came back into meta, um, which definitely opens up a, a long-term option for if a potential blitzkrieg pick up here. So, right. I think that'll be pretty good for Vix. And then I, again, if blitzkrieg isn't what you got, I mean, you you have Alistar, right? You've got these backup who does similar things, but also can cover other bases. Overall, this seems the, I don't want to say odd man out of it, but like, for lack of better words, kind of the team that's different than everyone, in the sense of that they are not, it doesn't seem like they're confined to the norm, like, I'm going to jump and engage you can go now, right. dive, tanks, team fight comp. Right. They're one of the few that's, that doesn't just have like a death ball comp, um, uh, as what I would see as their ideal thing. A Paragon as well, it looked like, you know, sieging would be their best option, but... Now, I mean, this one looks like it's going to be fairly focused on kind of heavy lane dominance, almost almost similar to Unnamed, where Unnamed was kind of focused on a lot of lane dominance. Uh, these these guys look like they want to have a strong, you know, upper side of the map and then just kind of roll, roll the rest of it as it goes. All right, so to round out our list here, uh, we'll talk about Black Jaguar. Another team we've seen absolutely nothing of, so all of this is just objective, kind of looking into stats on OP.GG and stuff. Um, I, I guess I'll probably just start with their support, Wiener Eater. Um, absolutely popping off on NAMI right now. Um, 20, 27 games on NAMI in one day with a 70% win ratio. It's not bad. Uh, <laughs> You don't you don't see that often. Yeah, it's I mean I wish I, I mean I would love to do that. Are you kidding me? I mean that's that's amazing. If you can play that many games and do that well consistently throughout that that shows something that's really good right. actually. Um and his kill lines were great, so it's not like his team was just carrying or anything. He had 6 KDs, 20 KDs, 5, 7, 17, 4, 6, 3, 8. I mean, these are all good KDAs. Yeah. Not all, not every single game, but the vast majority of them were awesome. Yeah, this guy is like I mean, actually a force to be reckoned with if you put him on Nami. Um, so I would ex yeah. I would honestly expect, after looking at this, I would expect teams to ban their way. Just for first ban, yeah. Nami. It's not like his other support picks are coming up short at, by any sense there either. You got 49% win rate on Vigar support. I, I mean, okay. Right. You got Soraka support, a 49% win rate with a 6.63 KDA. Yeah. Not the best win rate, but that KDA, KDA is on Blitz. killing it. I mean, his his support, honestly, this is... I'm really excited to watch the support. Um, he doesn't play anything that... It doesn't seem like he plays much of it in like engage heavy or something like that. That's super meta. But he's coming into this Nami strong. Soraka and Vigar are, are good KDAs. Um, fairly negative win rate right. on that, um, which is relatively okay. Yeah. And uh, vastly positive win rate on his blitz rank. So I'm I'm really excited to watch him play. Uh, yeah, it it seems like. I mean, it's a very good player, uh, and he plays a lot of 
pretty off meta picks. Uh, Vega and Soraka by no means meta. Um, so I mean, keeping those KDAs across that many games um, is pretty impressive, especially when he doesn't even technically have a positive win rate on them. Um, but I, I think a lot of the, the win rate on that is probably attributed to the fact that they're not meta. Um, so I mean, once these characters kind of start falling in line with the meta, as we see the game kind of going towards this, uh, I mean, those could be really good picks for him. Uh, so really looking forward to, to watching this person play. Uh, I think definitely one of the more unique supports we've seen so far out of all of them. Um, and then jumping over to the mid lane, um, huge win ratios on Vladimir Korki and Vygar. 75, 73, 67. Like, those right. are huge. Uh, so being that he plays Vygar, that gives him that possibility of a flex pick, which you don't hear too much with the Vygar, but it allows right. it at least. They pick the Vygar. Is it mid? Is it support? Which one do you try to counterpick? Do you try to counterpick both? Uh, what, what do you do, right? Um, or, again, do you, do you put that ban on it going, okay, maybe maybe I want to ban the Vagar because that hits two people at once rather than hitting the Nami, right? Uh, so, again, right. things that are going to help them a lot in these pick bans if they play it right. Uh, I mean, Vladimir and Corky are also two very strong mid laners as well. Yeah. I think... I think uh, so far, their champion pools are looking really nice. What they play, um, how they played, is really right. nice. Uh, the jungler has been playing Jarvan, some Zach, some Sedge. All fine picks yeah. there. Uh, you know, it doesn't have the crazy, crazy games either games in a row played or the crazy win rates, but still playing champions that are going to help his lane for the champions they right. are. Yeah, I mean, he's all over the place, but he's got a positive win rate on pretty much all of his top characters. So, yeah, I mean, if you give him the J4 or the Zac, I really expect this guy to be doing well um, and should be assisting his team through the early game, which I think is always good from a jungler, you know. I don't think we're in a late-game hyper-carry jungler meta, so I think being able to play these kind of early-game assistance jumblers is definitely really good. And then, uh, in the top lane, kind of breaks out the Nekton, Maokai, Nessus, Olaf, well, he's kind of all over the place, yeah. too. But, which isn't always terrible, he's been playing Warwick top, uh, which, again, another off meta pick. He does have a 100% win rate on it. Yeah. In ranked. Oh, um, <laughs> oh in ranked. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I'm not going to say it's a good pick. I would probably edge on the lineup. No, that's a bad pick. But, I mean, he's making it work. He's playing primarily yeah, duelist top laners with uh, the Renekton and the Trundle and the Kled. Um, and, and Warwick would be dueling as well. So, uh, kind of another pick. Not too many. Go ahead. <laughs> um, not too many like super heavy engaged tanks coming off him, but some good duelers. Uh, and he's gonna be—it seems like he's gonna be looking to get like an earlier lead for his yeah. team. To allow the uh, bot lane and the mid lane to kind of kind of spike if he's playing that quirky. Having a quirky and a carry top really is gonna help get uh, like a vein or a Varus or, or something pushed into their mid to late right. game. They're really gonna start or they're gonna start carrying and then you got a support and uh wiener eater there for uh, some good peel and it'd be nice to see that jungler get some some peel champions in there too so they can really have a good late game beat yeah. down. I'd, so to see that the game does get that far. Right. Yeah, I mean say you've got this heavy duelist top, uh, again similar to some of the other teams down here. Uh got this top laner who looks like he probably wants to try to win win lane you know he gets he gets ahead in lane um which possibly buys time for a vagar mid or vagar support to scale up or you've got this corky who wants that like one item power spike at the trinity force you know he gets that and he gets a package you know he can go top to you know escalate that um so i, I think kind of the, the top side of the map looks like it could definitely be scary if they play around it 
But then inversely, I mean, the bottom side of the map with this uh, this support, it looks like it can be very self self sufficient, um, which I think is definitely good for a team comp to have. Um, it is again one of those harder styles, uh, and that's one of the reasons why we put them down here. Uh, their their wing condition, while potentially very strong, is very difficult to actually pull off. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm I'm really hoping that this uh, this team can kind of pull together and show us. I mean, tech show us wrong that having uh coming in kind of the the bottom three here. I mean, they definitely have a lot of big highlights. It's just that we literally can't go off of anything other than OP.GG yeah. for it. So it would be really nice to see how they can play and how they work as a team together and all this, all that jazz. We can really see how, how they are as a team. Yeah, it, it'll be pretty, pretty big seeing how they do. Well, that pretty much wraps up our uh, power ranking predictions list. Um, again, it's it's all fairly objective off of you know, player stats and what we've seen. So, I mean, obviously, I, I would be very surprised if this actually ended up just like top to bottom being our, our best to worst. I think every team here has a chance at competing with each other. Um, and then it really just comes down to, in the end, who's, who's better at preparation, who's better at playing it as they go. Yeah, again, uh, thanks for coming by watching this. This was our first published video here um, for our channel. Uh, really appreciate the support and everything that uh, you guys can give us feedback or anything on. Um, looking forward to a good season. We will be releasing videos weekly uh, for informative content. On or Tuesdays, we will be releasing Video for uh, after the after the week summary of the games of what went well, what went wrong, and then on Fridays we should be in two separate videos, yeah, correct? We'll be, for the top yep, five, top five plays and predictions afterwards. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Ham Cam. I'm Tits, and we'll see you next time.